My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome to our St. Matthew virtual morning prayer service on this Sunday, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. As a sign of contrition, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. A reading from the Psalms. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe the last, they return to the earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and the widow and frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Micah. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you endured foundations, your enduring foundations of the earth. 
For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? And what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up in the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what the king Malak of Moab devised. What, what Boab, son of Bor, answered him, and what happened from Shechem to Giggle, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. <clears throat> what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O Lord, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Canticle 16. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon, but he did not answer at all. And his disciples came and urged him saying, send her away for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. He answered, is it not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs? He said, yes, Lord. Not yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master, master's table. And Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish and her daughter was healed instantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friend, we have for uh, today one of, the, uh, one of those wonderful, beautiful lessons from scripture, uh, from Micah. If you have been following what I do usually with morning prayer, I, uh, I have been using you know, more often than not, the second lesson from the New Testament. But today, um, I felt that I needed to use the lesson from the Hebrew Scriptures instead of using the lesson from uh, the New Testament. And sometimes you, I mean, if you want to do it, what I call right, uh, truly right, you use all the lessons. I just, um, I think a morning prayer service, if it flows, uh, and and especially these times in which we live in, if, if you can do it in half an hour, 35, 40 minutes, stop. It's, it's, 
is best uh, liturgically. I think it's best for for people. Uh, and then if you use all the lessons, uh, you kind of like are uh, extending. You are going um, almost to an hour uh, if you do everything you are supposed to do, including the two, three psalms appointed for the day and so forth. So I, I have decided, you know, to just use a lesson and always the gospel lesson, of course. Uh, but this lesson from Micah, I think, says so much about our relationship with God, right? You hear, uh, like, it is often in prophetic books and the Hebrew scriptures, this argument between God and his people. Uh, hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice, right? This this idea that all of creation is the place where God is to be found, the place God inhabits. And that's the reason the, uh, the author here is saying, you know, plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice. Hear you mountains, the controversy of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth for the Lord has a controversy with his people and he will contend with Israel. And so we hear this setting, right, uh, of this argument between God and God's people. And, and God is beautiful to listen the, to the language, right? Because God, as God self, doesn't begin the argument by, by you know, cursing or pointing the finger. He's just asking the question, almost like in a lament way, lamenting it uh, and, and the way of contrition. Oh, my people, what is it I have done to you? What is it that I have done to you? In what have I worried you? Answer me, please. You know, it's, it's like when you feel in your relationships with others that you have done everything correctly, that you have tried to do the right thing and other people don't get it or other people just can't stand you or forgive you or accept you for who you are. And that happens to all of us, right? And so God is in this very vulnerable human situation where he's pleading to his people and saying, tell me, what is it that I have done wrong to you? What is it that I have worried you in? Answer me, please. And then God, in this beautiful way, which is found in, in the commandments of scripture, begins to, to tell his people his story of love towards them. His story of love towards them, because I brought you out of a slavery. I went, when you hear Egypt in Hebrew scriptures, what you are talking about is I gave you freedom. I gave you freedom. And any, anyone who has an idea of what is to be a slave, what is to be uh, against the yoke of a power, a, a, a human power, knows how miserable it can be, but how humiliating it is to the human person. And God reminds his people and says, I, I brought you out of slavery. I brought you out of Pharaoh's yoke. And I redeemed you from that very house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, his prophets. You got to think that the prophets were like emissaries who were bridges between God and the marketplace and between the marketplace and the divine. Oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balan son of Beor answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of glory. In other words, look at all your neighbors. Look at what other kings do to you. And I think in Samuel, we hear that clearly when, when it says, you know, the rejection of God uh, that is, is not, you know, that rejection of God, it, it's, it's even unthinkable because the God, God has been good 
the Lord has been good. And all these other kings, human kings, the only thing they do is to exploit their people, to send them to war, to kill their children, to enslave their children. And that, that is what God is, is talking here with his people and saying, you know, remember, remember what these other kings do to their people. Do you want to be under their rule? And it's almost like God is telling us today as well. It's like, who are your gods? Whom are you following? Are you following me or are you following the gods that society has made to keep you entertained and to keep you enslaved? And God continues. And then here we have a, 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 a transfer, excuse me, from God, the conversation moves from God to, to the people, right? With what shall I come before the Lord asks a believer, a faithful, and bow myself before God on high. So here is an admission of the sin, an admission of, in a way of recognizing that the people of God has fallen short of what God has intended for us. And it says, should I come? What, what do I need to do to repair my relationship with God? What is it that I need to do to repair that relationship with a God who wants my freedom, who wants joy in my life, who infinitely loves me, and who wishes the very best for me? Should I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Look at the, the, the hyperbole here. Thousands of rams with tens of thousands of rivers. Shall I give my firstborn, right? We recall here the story of Isaac. Abraham and Isaac. Isaac, shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. Should I give everything I have? And Lord, in God, in God's infinite goodness, in God's infinite love towards us, says, O oh, mortal, this is what the Lord requires of you. Here we hear like a third person. We hear the argument from God and the, the response of, of the sinful humanity or human being back, and then a third person who says, he has told you, oh, moral, what is good. He has told you, oh, moral, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? It's not the tens of thousands of rams. It's not the thousands of rivers of oil, the tens of thousands of rivers of oil. It is that you do do justice. I mean, some translations say act justly, but here it says you do it. It's not just an action that you may do now, but it's something you constantly do to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. A fair thing is what the Lord is requiring of us. To do justice and justice here we have to be careful because human justice is usually a form of vengeance human justice is usually a form of vengeance you know you you the kind of eye for an eye and 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 tooth for a tooth um where i want a retribution for a wrong done to me but if we think about god's justice in scripture like my professor, uh, Jim Sanders, who passed away last weekend, and he was the most influential person, I think, in my life in seminary. He would say, God's justice is equal to God's mercy. So I believe when Micah here, the book of Micah says that to do justice is, it is the same thing as to do the justice of God, and that justice of God is to be merciful, to extend grace to others. 
And when we extend that grace to others, we love and understand God's mercy towards us. And by understanding God's mercy towards us, we also understand that our walk on this earth is a humble walk with him who infinitely and unconditionally loves us. I'm moving fast forward to the second reading from the gospel. What we see here is that doing of justice, loving of mercy, and walking humbly by Jesus himself. Because this woman belongs to a despised class in her society. A Canaanite woman, someone who was living on the edges of the society of Jesus' day. And she pleased to the Lord to even be able to eat the crumbs that fall under the table from the child's meal. And Jesus not just answers positively to the woman by saying, your faith, grace, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. But this woman is the epitome, being a Canaanite, of someone who understands what it is to do justice, to love mercy, and above all, to walk humbly, to walk humbly with her God. Amen. I invite you now to reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffragists be, save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. You, O Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us. That we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. For Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We offer now to Almighty God our intercessions and thanksgivings. We especially pray for, for the church uh, this Sunday, um, those churches in our diocese and throughout the church, they're trying to go back to the new normal, trying to open in their doors to worship again. Uh, we pray for safety of all involved. We pray for guidance of the Holy Spirit. We pray for uh, being flexible in all the different um, situations that, that this time require of us, right, to, to help each other and to try to do the best we can with our uh, different uh, situations, right? We pray for still those who are sick, fighting uh, this virus and those who have other um, medical illnesses going on as well in the midst of this difficult time. We pray for medical personnel, those who are in the healthcare profession trying to be healing um, vessels for God's people. We pray also for those things that we may have in our minds um, at this, this day, right? We pray for the, the health of the people we love and those who are far off. We, we pray for our country as we get closer to an election day that our democracy may continue to be strong um, and that people may participate without fear and that uh, we may continue to, to defend uh, the rights and the great constitution of this country we love. We pray also for those in our parish who might be ill or going through difficult situations, especially Alan Barron, Candace Clifford, Rashawn Donnelly, Madison Ford, Carmen Garcia, Franklin Harris, for Deacon Joanne, for Robert uh, Libler Jr., for Lydia, Mercy, Susan Miller, for George Montesino, for Shaila Morala, Morales, Sandra Morera, for Lisa N, James O, Luz Obando, Julio Perez, Joanne Pennerman, Lindsay Rosen, Anna Sasso, Charlotte Sweb, Everett Soar, Gladys Tejera, William Turner, Marisa Valverde, for Grace Avalon, Lee, for Magali, Michael, Rosa, Zach, Jack, Barbara Garcia, Tim Clifford, 
Marianne Kett, and for all the men and women serving in our armed forces. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully. We pray that we may obtain effectually through the mercies and glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.